The secret of Pentecost is that it was not group fire that arrived on the day of Pentecost. When the fire came from heaven, it scattered. And the Bible says, one tongue of fire rested on the head of each person. A tongue of fire rested on each head. The word used in that scripture is diamerizo. It is utterly separate. Utterly. One version said divided. Divided tongues of fire. Separate tongues of fire landed. So all the 120 people in that upper room, each person received a tongue of fire. It was a personalized fire pack. Each person collected power. And when that tongue of fire sat on their head, it didn't sit on top of their head. It descended into their heart and went into their bones. Hallelujah. Thai, hallelujah. It went into their bones. So when Satan made the terrible mistake of using persecution to scatter them, he scattered fire. He scattered fire. He scattered fire. He scattered fire. So Philip arrives in Samaria. Now, this brother Philip, pay attention now. This brother Philip was not an apostle. He was not an apostle. This brother Philip was an usher. That usher. You see this thing you call Deacon. He was sharing food. This thing you call Deacon. Don't, don't, don't make Deacon some one big title. You know the problem that gave birth to Deacons? It was food problem. But even to share food in that church, you needed to be full of the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine? Not to preach on the pulpit, to share food. You needed to be full. Not that you have Holy Spirit. The word is full. Go to Acts chapter, go to Acts chapter 6. Put up Acts chapter 6. Let's read it. Now in those days when the number of disciples multiplied, rose a complaint, neglected in the daily distribution. Keep going, verse 2. Then the 12, someone, it's not correct for us to leave the word of God and serve tables. Next verse. Therefore, watch the, watch the qualities. Brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation. Number one. What's the second thing there, everybody now? Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom who we can appoint over this business. The business of the church suffers when it is being operated by people who are not full of the Holy Spirit. The church suffers when our ushers and our musicians are not full. They are not full. All of the singers, you will be full, full, full. Your music will be an overflow of your fullness. I said your singing will be an overflow of your fullness. Even our drivers will be full, full of the Holy Spirit. Why not? Why not? The question is, why not? Because Jesus died only for apostles. No. What Jesus did for every man of God, he did for every child of God. You cannot argue with that. Full of the Holy Spirit. Keep going. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen. Everybody say Stephen. A man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. You see, this is people who are sharing food. These are not apostles. And so, brother Philip ended up in Samaria. In Samaria, there is a principality there called Mr. Simon. But Jesus. The, the man was a magician. The man was... He had, he had Samaria in his pocket until Brother Philip arrived. An usher. One brother who was sharing food, not apostle. He's not Peter. Now, when Philip got to Samaria, Philip will have, if it is today, Philip will run to his papa, his father in the Lord, and say, hey, man of God, cover me, cover me, cover me. There is one terrible native doctor in Samaria. Please pray for me that he will not destroy me. I need grace. Cover me. And then the person will come with prophet's offering. I say, pray for me so that I can face it. I can survive. I can survive. Philip was not looking for survival. His ministry overthrew Simon the Magician from Samaria. May God raise ushers that we collect cities. I say, I say, may God raise ushers that we take up cities. That is what the end time church is going to look like. That, that is what the final revival will look like. And the good news is that you are the person that God is talking about. I can't hear somebody in this place. I say, it's you. 
I'm describing what God will do with you. The question is, why not? Why should the Holy Spirit be less inside you? Why should you? You need to think about what I'm saying. If you have this same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, that worked in these brothers, why should it be less in you? I thought there are times I pray, I say, Holy Spirit, why would you be less in me than you were inside Peter and inside Jesus? No. So you know the rest of the story, signs and wonders, miracles. How did it happen? It could not be Philip. It was the spirit that had entered inside Philip. It's important you understand. Remember where we started. Jesus began something. How did he begin it? Because a spirit, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, came on him and filled him. And amazing things began to happen. Is like you, maker of heaven.